What is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode here on my personal channel where we talk about everything around investing and success. And today I wanted to talk about a question that I get pretty often and that is about uh, the 1%. And people ask, ask what it requires. What is, what is this, this kind of phantomous-like generation of, of people that is in the 1%? How did they get there? Uh, and and what is what does that mean <laughs> exactly? So when people say, "Are you in the one percent?" they are referring to usually net worth of someone, and uh, usually it's measured by uh, age. Whenever you're looking at like Investopedia or things like that, it's the best way to gauge you know if at, at what point in people's lives they are reaching one percent. Usually later on in life. It makes more sense. You've had all this time compared to more compressed younger people that are in the these one percent ranges are uh, you know hustlers. They're moving fast, and uh, you know later on you you have a lot more time to accumulate wealth. So the first one I wanted to go over twenty five through twenty nine years of age. You are in the one percent if you have an eighty thousand dollar net worth. From ages 30 through 34, which right now is where I fall, you have to have $400,000 in net worth to be part of the 1%. Now, these numbers, once again, are based on uh, your assets. And if you look at your assets and your liabilities, you have to subtract your liabilities. Like if you have a ton of student loan debt or you have a bunch of car debt, uh, those work against you when we're talking about net worth here. Keep that in mind. If you have an investment property, you have that mortgage, and then you have you know your cash flow coming in, and what you owe, that debt minus what the house is worth, is going to be actual plugs of net worth coming out of there. So that's kind of a good foundation for everybody to think about this because uh, you know if you have a hundred rental properties, you know you're you're gonna far surpass these these numbers pretty quickly uh, and that's just setting up paths uh, of various various ways of accumulating wealth that I've covered on the channel many times before but let's keep going down the list so 25 to 29 is eighty thousand dollars net worth is the one percent 30 to 34 is four hundred thousand dollars to be in the one percent and 35 to 39 years old 1.25 million dollars you have to be a millionaire to be in the 1% between 35 and 39. Jumping into 40, from age 40 to age 44, you have to have $3.2 million in net worth to be part of the 1%. From age 45 to 49, you need to have $5.2 million. So big jumps here. Each time it's almost doubling, if you notice that. Uh, it's getting up there. It's going up by like 40% each time. Uh, so 45 to 49, 5.2 million. 50, going into the, the golden years here. 50 to 54, $7 million. 55 to 59, $8.4 million to be in the 1%. And then you're jumping into 60 here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you look at the, the time span of your life, and even if you're putting money into, let's say, an account that's accumulating compound interest where, uh, you know, $10 becomes $11 and then the interest accrues on that $11, and then it accrues on $12, and then it accrues on, you know, $15. It just keeps growing over time. That's something that people take advantage of when they start getting this kind of escape velocity uh, net worth here. As you get later on in life, once you hit that 65 range there, you're definitely looking at, um, you know, a lot more time to accumulate wealth if you start when you're young. So jumping into 60 here, the kind of finale of the net worth uh, top 1% uh, here. So 60 to 64, $9.4 million puts you at the 1%. You are now part of the Illuminati 1% out there if you have $9.4 million by the age of 64. Now, 65 plus is where the, the kind of uh, measurements here cut off, and that is $11.7 million. So if you can manage to accumulate $11.7 million by the age of 65, uh, you have made it to the 1%. Now, keep in mind, 
there is no one way to skin a cat. You can definitely do however, you know, you could go in and out, in and out of the, the 1% here. You know, there's no rush. This is all averages and there's plenty of people who have, uh, you know, millions of dollars, but there's also plenty of people who do not. And there's a lot of inequality in this, uh, this world. And I think that debt is often one of the ones that people forget about. Because if I go to drive down a street in a very nice neighborhood, let's say in Tampa, Florida, where I'm based, you come across a whole line of Mercedes, Land Rovers, BMWs in 4,000 square foot houses, all along, uh, you know, beautiful roads in very, uh, very nice areas. I see a lot of debt deployed there. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, maybe half of them could have paid cash for everything, but at the same regard, uh, people people often mistake what, uh, what true wealth is. Now, I've covered this on the channel in the past many times about debt, and it's like fire if you use it and you know how to use it, you can crush it by levering up and, and getting investment properties, cash flowing, amazing income properties and all over the world, all over, all over the United States specifically as what I'm focused on. But I think that there is so much value to having debt, but there's also bad forms of debt, credit card debt and uh, automotive debt, things like that. I am not a fan of um, because they are not good, not good for, for, Exercises like this, for example, when you're going through a list of net worths, it's the all those all those debts are working against you uh, when you're when you're doing that. But in the same way, these one percenters uh, here, as you could call them, I guess, <laughs> is is you know if I have zero dollars in my savings account, but a hundred thousand dollars coming in uh, from cash flow each month, and I'm reinvesting it, just absolutely. Uh, crushing the real estate game or uh, any other type of income stream that's generating a massive amount of cash flow like that, I think there there's a different mindset here. And a lot of the net worths that I just went through are very much a, uh, a snapshot of a group from you know age 60 to 64, 45 to 49. There's just a, a quick little snapshot of, of time there and I don't think that it does it justice necessarily because there's a lot of different ways to look at the net worth of someone and uh, if they're in these different percentages of uh, you know society and whatnot so I hope that that kind of demystified how uh, you look at the one percent 11.7 million dollars by the age of 65 means that you were in the one percent at that age but if you're 25 and you have $80,000 in net worth, you are in the 1% as well. So two sides of the spectrum there. So feel, feel good about where you're at and keep hustling. And I hope that this sort of uh, exercise helped you demystify it a little bit. <laughs> but that is it for this episode. Slap a like. The link to the buying and selling uh, Flippa websites will be in the description below. If you use the coupon code PASSIVE, it will give you 30% off. Uh, I have had, have had a lot of people asking me questions about that in DMs. Previous videos have had a ton of comments recently from it, and I think that's because of the pandemic. A lot of people are wanting to buy their next job by buying an online business and running that instead, which is an amazing use for the Flippa Marketplace. So definitely click that link in the description. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts. Shoot me a DM on Instagram if you guys are interested in more of this type of content. And definitely keep on hustling. And I'll see you guys on the next episode here on my personal YouTube channel.